Now in the write up I've just noticed it says it's a good idea first to make the blocks first so that you can make the slot of the uh, valve a nice fit for the block to, to the block so that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to make these two little drive blocks first and all they are is um, it says mild steel on the actual drawing but I'm not going to use mild steel because at the end of the day the they're in water and steam all the time so I found this little bit of stainless and I've cut two pieces off to the relevant dimensions uh, which is three quarter by half inch by a quarter and there's got to be a three sixteenths hole in this so you can appreciate there's not much much room either side the quarter thickness to play with to get it in the centre so I think it's best to do that in the lathe you can see how very thin it is on that wall thickness and I'll I'll take you over to the lathe and I'll show you my setup so here's my setup in my forge or chuck in my Myford I've got the block in in the chuck now and this is basically this is for anybody that's beginning that's not used to doing lathe work uh, when you've cut your actual blocks drive blocks if you make sure that the, you make them square make sure all the faces are square to each other then when you put it in your chuck and gripping on the four jaws you can then set your dart test indicator onto all the four corners and when you've got them within a couple of thousandths you'll know that you're very very near to that centre probably a lot nearer than you'd ever be by doing it by eye by centre popping it Right, so if you can see needle on my dart test indicator, that's that's reading minus two, minus one and a half, sorry, thousands. Then on the next corner, it's reading zero. Then on the opposite side corners. that's reading one thousandth minus one thousandth and the next corner is minus a half there so I've basically got that block now set up with plus or minus a thousandth I think if I go in with the full diameter 3 sixteenths it might end up a little bit too big so I'm going to go up in a couple of steps in drill sizes. Right, so you can see how re really close it is to this wall of this uh, block. So it, I think it's important that you do this in your forge or chuck. So before I go back onto the actual valve, I'm, I'm going to carry on and do the valve spindles. You need two pieces of 3 16 stainless, um, 4 and 9 16 long valve adjusting nuts they're made in brass so I may I may do all these little ancillary components before I move back onto valves
that. I'll just explain exactly what I've been doing on the lathe. And I've been making the other components here that belong to the valve. That's the spindle, the valve adjusting nuts, and the spindle fork. And also that's not, not shown on, on any of the drawings is the actual pivot pin that holds this into the other part of the fork on the loco with a split pin through which I've got to cut to length yet to there and that's just a straightforward pin with a lit with a head on it and then a split pin through it there's nothing nothing really difficult about that no, nor is there with the valve um, fork it's just a piece of brass it actually says mild steel in the book but I've done it in, in bronze and it's just a matter of milling a slot in at 3 sixteenths wide and tapping it 2BA or whatever size you use to fit the valve spindle right then the valve block which I made earlier you get, you, you get one nut on your spindle then your valve block then the other nut fits on and these nuts are just made in brass and it's just a straightforward hex hexagonal brass with a plain with a plain shank on it to, tapped out 2B8 and all that does is clamp the valve block in position once it's situated in, into the valve in that position there and there's, there's two of everything made there